service in Springfield has issued a tornado warning for southeastern Cherokee County, northwestern Newton County, southwestern Jasper County, until 4.15 p.m. Central Standard Time. Expected hazards include tornado. This is a radar-indicated threat. The following impacts are expected. Flying debris will be dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. Locations impacted include Joplin, take cover now. Move to a basement or an interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building. Avoid windows. If you are outdoors, in a mobile home, or in a vehicle, move to the closest substantial shelter and protect yourself from flying debris. National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for western Jasper County until 1800 hours. National Weather Service Doppler radar indicated a tornado 10 miles west of Carl Junction or 6 miles east of Columbus, moving east at 30 miles per hour. storm has a pr history of producing funnel clouds and tennis ball size hail. Time of dispatch, 1713. Live in southern Jasper, northern Newton, take cover yes, please. right now. Please I am too. telling you to yes, take they, cover. Take if we can get a hold of any fire trucks, we got the payless building completely down, two people in them, one of them's my wife, and we can't get in there anyway. I'm going to turn around and head back that direction. I've got a child here with a pole and tail in their leg. I'm trying to help them. The city of Joplin is nestled on the far west side of Missouri, near the Kansas and Oklahoma border, home to nearly 40,000 people in 2011. While the residents have experienced tornadoes and warnings in the past, nothing could have prepared them for what happened next. If your power goes out, remain calm. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. You see, the city of Joplin was experiencing an EF5 tornado. And to put this into perspective, in 2011, the United States had experienced only 56 EF5 tornadoes since 1950, a category defined by violent, destructive characteristics and wind speeds surpassing 200 miles per hour. The residents of Joplin were advised to hunker down and shelter in place as the tornado touched down. And behind the scenes, first responders were bracing themselves for the horrors that were about to follow. Station National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for Western Jasper County until 1800 hours. National Weather Service Alpha Radar indicated a tornado 10 miles west of Carl Junction or 6 miles east of Columbus, moving east at 30 miles per hour. Storm has a history of producing funnel clouds and tennis ball size hail. Time of dispatch, 1713. Station 1, one copy. Station 2, one copy. Station 4, one copy. Station 5 on copy. Step 1 copy. 11 1. Gas coded. All units of service on listening station. National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for Western Jasper County until 6 p.m. Black Hat and 20th Street area. We had an anonymous phone call of two funnel clouds. 
house in the Loma Linda area, and then they hung out. Negative, what you got? I had a caller reporting Final Cloud 20 in the black cat. Uh, uh, the lightning strike uh, from where I'm at, uh, a few blocks away, and uh, purple, green, and blue explosion. I have lots of damage. The bulk of our damage right now is going to be just across the line into Jasper County, multiple entrapment issues. 10-4, I'm heading that direction. Looks like most of the storm, I believe, has followed around 30 seconds. Uh, Joplin's got quite a bit of damage. I'm heading that direction now. Any particular area? Uh, I know St. John's was hit uh, in that area uh, where my folks live. was hit real hard right there by St. John's. I'm heading that direction. I'll be in that area pretty quick. Tampa, what's the uh, worst area now over on the west? Gentry over at, uh, in Joplin, the range line area, uh, 20th Street area. Uh, 10 4. 0 5 41. Well, we're going to have the worst damage around 20th in Maine. We've got whole buildings missing, multiple subjects injured. Joshua Rescue 411 is around the Cedar Ridge area, South Blackhead. If we can get a hold of any. Fire trucks, we got the payless building completely down, two people in them, and one of them's my wife, and we can't get in there anyway. <laughs> Myself and 3 are coming that way. I'm pretty sure everybody else is tied up on something right now. We're trying to get to you. We're going to need a fire truck here to get the debris picked up. The tornado, they by se uh, several semis are turned over. Several people are injured. They did hit the pump, and they are leaking at this time. 11570, Highway FF is flying J, timeout 816. Engineering County Units listening stations have a confirmed sighting of a tornado on the ground, Cherry and Quail. Cherry and Quail moving to the southeast. 102, we'll get assignments, keep the radio freed up. 345. I've been advised that 223 is trapped in his house. He lives on the on Tyler, about 24th and Tyler. We can get units over there. Jasco Fire Station, 71 personnel page. Any personnel to respond? Any available personnel? 115 Stingle. Jasco to all stations. Fire West. Be advised, St. John's was hit in the storm. Jaguar Central, be advised, heavy heavy damage at 71 and Double F Frank. Uh, Traffic signals are gone, cars are flipped over, power lines across the road everywhere. Go ahead. Made contact with the job on officer here at 32nd and 71, 249. They're advising they need a lot of help at I-44. There's multiple vehicles that are turned over. 10-4, just let them know we're trying to get help as soon as possible. I've got a lady packaged up. It's the one that had a, uh, she's got a pretty severe cut on the top of her head. I've got the bleeding stop for now, but I just wondered if they were in the area. I haven't seen one yet. Engine 11 12, would you notify Webb to you we're coming through hot? I said a male subject approached me, said that he had multiple injuries, possibly over at Wall and 30th. I'm trying to make way over there. It's heavy debris. Copy. Uh -huh. One, Barry County's online, wanting to know if we want their search and rescue to start this way. You know, I would say yes. Um, Joplin is going to need lots of help, but I've not been able to make contact with them yet. 10-4. 3-4-3-3-2-3. Three, 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 three. Go ahead. Trees and houses everywhere down, just FYI in this area. Hey, copy that. 3-4-4, four, four, dispatch. Guys. I have a couple injured that injured at Flying J. I have propane leakage inside the restaurant. I've evacuated the buildings for now. Copy, the contact. Copy. I have two units and eight people responding. She's got 
got uh, her family in a pickup here. It looks pretty much like uh, DOA. Okay, uh, stand by one second. If you can, can you contact the Sheriff's Department and see if they can send us at least one deputy over here? Um, we've had some reports of some DOAs. Copy all sent here, Fire Department. Station 7 1, this is engine 11 12. We have a saw on our truck. We're coming down Hall Street now. Still getting reports here from people saying that their relatives are trapped at Walmart, 15th and Range Line in the cooler. I'm sorry, Walgreens on Range Line. Uh, Central, just relay information for Newton County Able if they've not been able to get through. They're advising they have several walking wounded here and they need some units they can get here right there. Okay, are you still at 27th and Main? Yeah, 10-3, they've got a couple trucks set up. They're putting people in the back of them if they need shelters. A little static, you can go ahead. There's a report that there are people trapped on the roof of St. John. Got a subject trapped in a vehicle severely injured. Try to get an ambulance from Home Depot to come up here to uh, help. And is there any fire units that can help with uh, extrication? I'm not sure. The last report we had was at the area of 20th and Duchesne. We're going to need an extrication unit. Subject trapped by his vehicle. 26th Street. Okay. Jason, if you can, can you pick an area over there and just kind of set up an area? And as I start sending units into that area, can you kind of guide them where they need to go? Let's start searching some of these houses as quick as possible. You turn around and head back that direction. I've got a child here with a pole and pelt in their leg. I'm trying to help them. I'll go ahead and take care of it. If you need some assistance, we'll send you somebody. I don't see any ambulances around up here. If you can maybe get a hold of one, try to send it this way. We're at 20th in Connecticut. Briefed. Uh, we've got people screaming and hollering and uh, going to start a riot because we're not getting assistance. So we need it just as fast if you can, sir. Where do you need them at? Here around St. John's. Okay, over here around St. John's. Uh, we've already triaged one female. Springer, uh, we've got people screaming, other people are trapped. We just don't have the manpower, sir. 10-4. Uh, uh, dispatch, uh, if you copy that, uh, go ahead and get a hold of 107 there and uh, have him send uh, uh, our units over to that area. Three 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 one zero two. Go ahead. If you can copy me, twenty third and Tyler to the east. There's an entire apartment complex that has been destroyed. Uh, there's hundreds of people out there with injuries. The middle school, which is half gone. Station seven one just so far. You know, traffic for Jessica, this is Fire Station 7 1. We need you to contact some ambulances from anywhere. If you have to contact Monet or Springfield, wherever, get us some ambulances started this way, please. 7 1, we've contacted ambulances, including Lawrence County. They're advising it was going to go to them soon, so they were holding off to be able to send anybody. Okay, copy. Met supervisor is trying to get a triage set up at 20th and Range Line. And I've also notified Carl Junction Special Road District. We've tried to notify some of the other road districts. We can't get through on cell phones. I believe either Carthage or Jasper County Common was notified by phone. Copy. 712 to Station 7-1. With the Humvee, uh, got multiple casualties. Is there anybody else in this area? And, uh, I'm just to the south of you guys. Okay, you need help down there? No, we've actually got it all cleared up from here on south. Um, but we have not hit those apartments, and uh, from what I hear, there's uh, several uh, cattle. 
First responders and dispatch were overwhelmed. What you heard in the beginning was the dispatcher relaying what the National Weather Service just released. All units were advised of what was heading their way. And following the initial tornado attack, first responders raced around the city to start triage. Unfortunately, they were quickly overwhelmed and stretched thin. Every first responder on duty came into contact with the general public, noticing the carnage that just unfolded. There were thousands of reports of injuries and multiple counts of casualties. For you see, they were experiencing a mass casualty event as numerous civilians were unaccounted for, trapped under debris, or had perished in the initial tornado volley. 
In the radio footage, you can hear the real emotions coming from the first responders as they're worried about their own families, with this in the back of their mind and witnessing some of the worst things they have ever seen. They still did what they were trained to do. Use extreme caution when driving. If traffic signals are out, treat each signal as a stop sign. Come to a complete stop at every intersection and look before you proceed. The dispatchers on duty had to sit and wait, answering hundreds if not thousands of 911 calls that poured into the communications center, not knowing if they were safe, even inside their own building. And it's hard to portray what a 911 dispatcher does day to day, let alone during a mass casualty event. And at this point in time, I can only speculate that the hundreds of 911 calls that were coming in were all active emergencies that required immediate medical assistance. However, if there are not enough dispatchers to answer these 911 calls, you may not get through, putting hundreds of potential callers in a queue waiting for their calls to be answered. You see, the computer terminals a 911 dispatcher utilizes is known as a PSAP, or a public safety answering point. These terminals are critical communication hubs where dispatchers handle emergency calls designed to ensure that no call goes unanswered, even during an overwhelming crisis. These terminals are also set up for redundancy meaning that if all the 911 operators are overwhelmed or if the comms center goes down, surrounding apartments will be able to reroute those 911 calls and assist in answering them. I cannot imagine the horrors these dispatchers felt as they listened to the cries for help, or in some cases, the callers perishing over the phone. And one thing I'll say is listening to somebody pass away on the phone, knowing that you were the last person they ever talked to, is a feeling we never forget. Report suspicious activities and call 911 for immediate response. Expect delays. Oh my gosh. I just saw a car flying through the air. I just saw a car flying through the air. Hey, there's a tornado right there. I just saw a car flying yeah. through the air, man. Thought I'd warn you guys if yeah, it starts turning this way. Where did it go? Um... I don't know. I think if it starts coming this way, you guys can run into my house, seeing as your guys is on, is on this side. But I think it's going to stay south. I'm worried about my wife. She's working at the hospital. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I work there too. They'll be safe. She's on the bottom floor, but that is nasty. Joplin residents experienced a force like no other, an EF5 tornado, pummeling parts of the town, destroying St. John's Hospital. Evidence remains of the time the storm hit, displayed on a clock tossed to the ground, 5.35 on the 22nd. At this time, the tornado was making its way directly to St. John's Hospital, while being a large hospital facility that was not prepared for the violence coming its way. The initial hit of the tornado wiped out the electricity in the building and tore the upper levels apart, leaving only debris and carnage in its wake. The tornado only hit the hospital for 45 seconds, but this was enough time to have a catastrophic impact. With the hospital being without power, patients who relied on life support needed immediate care, and the hospital's emergency generators failed during this time, 
and hospital workers had to rely on flashlights to navigate the halls. The medical staff became the first responders, tending to the patients, children, and those who were involved in a crisis. They did everything they could to keep order and started triage. Unfortunately, five people would perish due to their life support failing after the power went out. While attending to already existing patients, new patients started to pour in from first responders. It took less than 30 minutes for the tornado to destroy a large portion of Joplin and the lives of many. At this time, the tornado had dissipated and emergency responders were conducting search and rescue. Missouri State Highway Patrol sent in dozens of troopers to assist with search efforts and that same night, Governor Jay Nixon deployed the Missouri National Guard to Joplin. At around midnight, six hours following the tornado, Dr. Kevin Kikta, a worker at St. John's Hospital, was assisting first responders searching vehicles outside the perimeter of the hospital, looking for anyone trapped inside, and is quoted saying this. At about midnight, I walked around the parking lot of St. John's with local law enforcement officers looking for anyone who might be alive or trapped in crushed cars. They spray painted X's on the fortunate vehicles that had been searched without finding anyone inside. The unfortunate vehicles wore X's and sprayed on numerals, indicating the number of dead inside crushed in their cars. Many of the fatalities at the Home Depot have been found near the front of the store. People ran in, if they were, if they were huddled near the front, that would have been the most dangerous spot for them. Unfortunately, yes, because that's where the walls would have That's collapsed. where the walls came down. They've used heavy equipment to drill through the collapsed walls and check underneath. Then they push the walls out of the way. This, this is actually a wall of the, the Home Depot. Sure. And that was up, and then it fell, and then you guys had picked up the whole wall. What you got is a piece of concrete. You can see the insulation foam in between, and then another layer of concrete on top of that. Like this is all insulation. Absolutely. The walls may have collapsed, but oddly, the tornado left many of the store shelves still standing. This was a, a much more survivable environment here right, than it would have been to be at the front of the store where those huge concrete walls came down on folks. H have you already been through this area? Yeah, even with the front of the store being inaccessible, we were able to probe in from different places. With so much heavy equipment needed, the search is sometimes frustratingly slow. Continued rescue efforts were conducted around the impact zone. Large-scale construction equipment was utilized to move mass debris, looking for people or bodies trapped underneath. Rescue personnel were also helping in locating missing animals from the Joplin tornado, and over 900 cats and dogs were rescued during the search efforts. Unfortunately, some of these animals were never reunited with their owners. As the search efforts came to an end, the initial death toll was at 158 and rose to 161 as complications from the tornado resulted in further death. This wasn't the only lasting impacts. In the years following the Joplin tornado disaster, many suffered from mental health disorders. There's even accounts of some taking their own lives due to the extreme anxiety and depression this disaster caused. I don't believe anyone except those who experienced this firsthand can fathom what happened that day in Joplin. Not only did this incident highlight the necessity for enhanced first responder resources that brought a new trouble to light, the importance of planning. In a mass casualty event, it may be hours or even days before first responders can get to you. Establishing a disaster plan for your family can quite literally save your life. And due to the courageous acts of the first responders, 911 dispatchers, medical personnel, and the citizens of Joplin, Missouri, thousands of lives have been saved. And the community will forever remember May 22nd, 2011.